Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we are going to using the Rhino regular surface to talk about how to make this fleur de lis pattern. Are you ready? Let's get started. You can go online and research any of the image that you like, whether it's 2D or the 3D, that will be fine. Once you find an image, we're going to come into Rhino and use the command for picture. And we can bring in the image that we found online. It doesn't matter what size it is at this point that we need to trace is the curve. So let's go ahead to use the move command and we want to guess where is the center. So I'm going to click it right here and type in zero on my keyboard. So it will bring into the middle of the construction plane. Once we have that, we can lock in this picture. So you will no longer to accidentally to click it. So first of all, we need to trace those lines there. There's only a few lines that we need. So I'm going to using the control point curve and I'm going to trace roughly it doesn't have to be exactly unless that's what you want but I'm going to roughly to trace something like this and then the other one is this part right here so I'm going to trace roughly the same high and coming over here and get it as close as as possible so we're going to get something like this. If you realize this is not too close to what you want, you can turn on the control point. In the right of seven, once you click on the curve, the control point will automatically turn it on. In the older version, you might need to type it the command point on in order to get those points right here. So you want to edit this point to make sure that this is the curve that you want right there. Okay, so once you have that, let's go ahead to continue to trace. We're gonna trace again from this point, roughly the same high right here. And we're gonna trace this point. And this is where the peak is going to be. So we're gonna trace something look like this, right? And again, you can turn on the control point to edit if you want to. Very last one, we're gonna starting almost the same high right here and then all the same position. Uh, what I mean high is on the, your Y axis right there. And I'm going to keep tracing. I want to caving a little bit and then we'll get something like this. All right, so that's it. This is the perfect for whatever the size you're going to create. Now we want to unlock the background and we temporarily just want to hide it. This is the time that we are going to scale into the size that you want. If I turn it back right here, currently if I measure from roughly from this point to this point, this is about 30 millimeter. And if that is the size you want, that's fine. If not, it's the time to go ahead to scale it. So I'm going to, since I'm gonna, not gonna print it out, I'm going to stay with whatever that is here. Uh, just show you how to build this model. Okay, so now we have this over here. I'm gonna have this one mirror to the other side by hitting the zero coming over here. So then I will have this. Let me turn it into other color. It might be easier for you to see. All right, so now we have this cross point. We want to use a trim command to trim this off. All right, so now we have our curve ready. Let's take a look on all four view. This is our curve right there. So I need to create in the cross section. So I'm going to starting this endpoint, endpoint, and I actually need a midpoint right there. I'm going to draw a line going up something roughly about this high right there. All right. So this is going to help us to create where the center line is. And then I'm going to use the arc going to snapping into the endpoint right here and an endpoint right here and moving my mouse back to the front view and I'm going to create something like this. All right, so this is the arc that we are going to use and we need to have it on the other side and we're gonna use the mirror command snapping to the endpoint to the endpoint. So then we will get the curve right there. I intentionally want to have this point right there. So we will, when we sweep, we will see uh, via the center line right there. So I'm going to join those two curve. And the first surface we are going to use the sweep two command. You got rail one, you got rail two, and you got cross section right there. 
and then this is the surface that we will get for the center one. All right, so if you like this surface, that's okay. Uh, we are going to hide it temporarily so we can deal it with other two. All right, so the other two, um, in between here and here, I want a surface to be bump up. In between here and here, I want a surface to be caving. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the arc command, and this one is arc, start, end, and the point. So I'm going to start it from here to here, and I'm going to move it up for whatever, how high that I like to have. And the other one, we're going to snap it into here and here. This one, at the front view, you can see we're going to go down. Right, so then we have the structure like this. Let's go ahead to use the sweep to command. You got rail one, you got rail two, you got this cross section right here, and you will get something like that. Notice that the cross section, if you see on my top view, you see this is a little bit twist there. It doesn't look really organized there. So on your option right here, you have the one, the bottom here is called S slash. And then you want to add slash maybe one is here to make them more uni uniform, uh, something like this. All right, so it will look better. It won't have that twisting surface there. All right, if that look good to you, we're going to do it one more time. We're going to use a sweep two, and then we're going to have the rail one. You're going to have the rail two, and you're going to have this cross section right here. And again, this is more obvious. This is like twisting right here. So we want to add the slash going this way, going this way, and click OK. All right, let's take a look on what we have here. If you see the render view, you can see on the top, this one is bump. Uh, and the inside one is caving. If this is caving way too much, you might want to adjust this bump right there. All right. If you like it, let's go ahead to click on it and um, both of the surface and join it. All right. So now we have this. We need to learn how to close all those surfaces. So next, what we wanted to do is turning into the solid. So I'm going to pick up all the edges right here. This curve and this curve, only the outside and also the curve right here and also the curve right here. Let's go ahead to join them. And what I wanted to do is to project it to C plane, where is our construction plane. And do I want to delete the input object? No, I do not want it. I want to actually have a copy there. All right, so then we will have this copy. Once we have this copy right here, I'm going to just use that and to extrude it with the gumball. And for that, I will get this surface and just moving this surface to the top. All right. So now we have this surface and actually I'm going to scale it down to the size that I like. I'm going to move it up something like this. All right, so now you can see it is surrounded into a surface like that. So we are going to use the trim command and we're going to use the middle one to trim off the outer surface and we will get something like this. Once you have uh, the surface, let's go ahead to join it. And all we need to do is close the button. So we're going to use the command for cap and this will make it into solid. So now what we wanted to do is Turn on everything back, and then uh, I just I want to hide in the background. I want to find the middle one. Uh, make sure the middle one is out, and I'm, we are going to creating the wall there with the same process. Let's go ahead to pick up this curve, and I wanted to join them. And coming into the surface, you have the extruded from the curve. And then with this one, go ahead to join them as well. And now the only opening is the button and also the beginning that look like the gate over there. So let me turn it into the black color. It's easier for you to see. So in order to close this uh, gate looking things, um, we are going to creating a curve. Let's draw a straight line creating this curve on the bottom. And so we have this line here, this edge is right here, this curve on the top. So we do have a full line there. We're going to use the surface from two, three, four edges. And then we're going to pick up all those edges curve. All right. So now we have this. Make sure that we join all of them together. And to close the bottom, just using the cap command. And then you will close like that. So now this will be solid. 
Next thing, so what we wanted to do is to mirror that to the other side. So I just type it zero, holding my shift, and then I will have the other side right there. For the one on the bottom, I simply just uh, wanted to take a look on my image right there and let me lock it again uh, for this background. And I want to mirror that piece, just type it zero or somewhere in the center and I want to scale this down. Now, if you do not want to change the thickness of this piece, uh, you just want to change the X and Y, we're going to use the 2D scale. And using this as a reference and to scale it down, let it fit it into the drawing. Now, once you have done, you double make sure looking in the right view and see if the height is changed. And if it's not, that fitting into our design. So for the rest of it, it's the same like the one on the top. So I may want to fast forward right here uh, to show you how to do it because it's kind of a repeating. Um, so let's go ahead to draw those curves really quick. And again, you can use the control point curve or interpolate point. It's really up to you and then trace with the image that you have there. And then um, to adjust it, to turn on this uh, control point and to adjust it if you feel like it's not in the shape that you want. And I also want to adjust the very beginning, make sure that beginning, the first curve is fitting inside of the shape. So it's not having a gap there. And then I want to draw the cross section and having those cross section that we can do the sweep to command. The cross section can just freehand drawing or you can use the arc like what I have there. One is going to going up and the other one is going to going down. And after that, we just need to use the sweep to command. Using a sweep to rail to creating the surface right there. And again, if you can use a uh, slash, if it doesn't look too good to you, uh, for me, it might look okay. So I'm going to join both of the surface right there. And then the same way to creating the wall, I'm going to duplicate all those edges. And once we have this edges duplicated, we're going to join them. And after join them, we're going to project it to construction plane, which is projected to C plane. And we want to delete the input because this is the copy. And with that, we simply just want to extrude it that into a surface. So I just using the gumball and drag it down and moving up a little bit. And the same trick that we have using the middle one as the cutting tool to trim off the wall right there. Make sure you join it together and using the cap command to close it on the bottom. Again, we are going to make it to the other side by using the mirror command, type it zero, then it will be uh, symmetrical to the other side. For the one in the middle, I simply just want to draw a box there. And it's many other ways that you can do this, but simplest way is just draw a box. And I'm going to move this box to the top a little bit so it's easier for you to see. We're going to use the fillet edges and I'm going to set it up. I think one is fine. Going to set it up for one radius for all the edges there. And I'm going to move these things down to where it's supposed to be. If it look a little bit stiff to you, you don't like it. Let me change to other color. And we can use command for cage edit. And I have other videos specific talking about a cage edit. You can check out my channel, just type it cage edit to find this video. And then with this, we can pick up our object, select around a line to the wall, and then full point on each side, it's okay. And now I'm going to pick up a full point. And then I want to do the 1D scales to make it a little bit taper on both sides. So now I have this and double make sure this is what you want. And if you do, you can delete your cage and then you can move in the things up to the right position. Let's check on the render view and double make sure if everything it look right to you. So this is the render that I have here. I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to learn more right now, step by step, I do have a course on my website to teach you all the basics from the beginning and to intermediate level. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.